What it do, comic bros? It's your boy, Super Duper, man. Super Shine, and this is Power of Comics. Today, we're gonna do a review of Eric Larson's Savage Dragon Ultimate Collection Volume 1. Now, this is a review, so there will be spoiler talk. Without further ado, let's jump into it. Reading Eric Larson's Savage Dragon was a blast of all-time fun. From back to front, this story is paced wonderfully. Eric Larson lets the illustrations tell the whole story. I could literally look at the pages, ignore the bubble text, and come to an accurate conclusion on how that issue would end. I mean, it reads that smoothly. This book reminded me of why I love comics so much. I mean, the story knew exactly what it was, linked into that, stayed there, most importantly, pulled you in and took you for a wild ride. I swear, some of the fight scenes gave me that invincible feel. I mean, they were that graphic, that mature. By the end of this Ultimate Collection, I couldn't help but wonder if we would ever get an anime adaptation. So the story kicks off like this. Mr. Dragon, he, he has no memory. He wakes up in the hospital with no memory at all. He doesn't know who he is. He doesn't know where he came from. He doesn't know why he's here or how he got here, right? All of a sudden, a chief of police officers walks in, says that he found him in a burning field and that he would like him to train to join the police force. Mind you, the setting is Chicago, and as you can see, Mr. Dragon, Savage Dragon is an anamorph. So in the story setting, they call them freaks because they're half human, what have whatever animal, you know what I mean? And these freaks have taken over Chicago. I mean, they've got the crime rate, murder rate at an all-time high, and they are offing cops left and right. Wah, wah, taking them out, taking them out, right? So, the chief of police, his name is Frank Darling. He wants to recruit Dragon because he needs to fight fire with fire. Savage Dragon does not want to do it. Now, mind you, at this point in time, his name is not Savage Dragon. He gets the name Savage Dragon when he's leaving the hospital and the nurse says this, and the nurse says to him, hey, Dragon, and he's like, what? Why, excuse me, why are you calling me that? And she's like, because you got a fin on your head, you know? You got a little fin, you know? So, hey, that's how he got the dragon name, because he had a fin. Wait a minute, do dragons have fins on their head? Nah, it, it, isn't that uh, sharks or something like that with the fins or dolphins? Yeah, yeah, I, I don't know, but let's keep it moving. So, anyways, yeah. So, he tells them he doesn't want to do it. But the, the chief was like, well, you know what? I'm still going to help you. You don't know who you are. I'm going to hook you up with a job at this warehouse, hoping he will change his mind and join the force. He goes to work at the warehouse. And all of a sudden, freaks swarm the warehouse. They beat up his boss. And they try to come for Dragon. But, you know, this is this book is Savage Dragon. Bro is a savage. You know what I'm saying? You see the size on him? He ain't having it. Whack, left hook, right hook, bam. Slamming people into boxes. Slamming people into time clocks. You know what I'm saying? He ain't having none of that. He beats these guys down. The boss gets mad at Savage Dragon like, Yo, how could you do this? All they wanted was this. Now they're going to come back and offer us. Now they're going to come back. And he's like, Yo, I'm here now. Chill. I'll protect you. You ain't got to worry about that. In that same sentence, boom! That warehouse just erupts, y'all. It erupts. Blows up. Only thing left is Savage Dragon himself just... Uh, he's shocked. He's mad because at the same time, yes, his boss was berating him, but he did help him out. And he did tell him that he would protect him, which he could not do. You know what happens after this. He goes to Frank Darling, which is 
the chief of the police of the Chicago PD and says, yo, I will join your squad. So he joins the police force and man, from the start of it, he is a beast. You know what I'm saying? Anything he touches, he's folding. And if he ain't folding them, they getting cuffed up and thrown in the back of that paddy wagon. He's making a name for himself. Now, there's a couple people on the force that didn't really like him because they seen him as a freak, you know? And all they know from these freaks is mayhem. They never seen a good freak, you know what I mean? So they are skeptical about him, but there are a lot of people that are starting to accept him. He's starting to get named. He's starting to become that infamous savage dragon, you know? And he's wearing his cop uniform, you know what I mean? So, yo, th and th yo, this, this story was dope, man. I'm telling you, uh, it really put me in, man. So, as he's... As he's begin, as he's gaining his name from arresting criminals, a faction called the Villainous Circle. It's ran by Crime Lord Overlord. This dude a bad mofo, man. Mind you, there's two rogue heroes that are not a part of the police, but they're heroes, and their names are Mighty Men, Mighty Man, and Super Patriot. Overlord's gang. They capture Super Patriot. Y'all know what they did to this man, y'all? They break his legs. Crack, crack. Melt half his face off. And send him to the hospital, bro. He does not recover. You know what I mean? He does not recover. Mighty Man came up under Super Patriot. So this breaks Mighty Man. You know what I'm saying? This really breaks him. You won't see Mighty Man for a while because he just takes it hard. I mean, they basically killed Super Patriot. You know, Savage Dragon is like, man, now it's just me out here. I'm, I'm of course, I got these with my rest of my fellow officers, but they're not as strong as the freaks. The freaks are super powered. You know what I mean? We, you know, we just regular old humans, and they took out some superheroes. Super Patriot, Super Strength, could fly. He was a bad dude. They they broke both his legs, demolished his arms, all his limbs, and melted his face. But guess what? He survived. And the police force rebuilt him as a cyborg. Yes, they rebuilt this man as a cyborg. So he was called like, um, cyber something, cyber patriot or something like that. He had the US safe face mask and all that, but he was all robotic except for his brain, right? So there's a disturbance, I believe it was at the mall and I believe it was the villainous circle there, but Overlord wasn't there. So when they go there, they say, hey, we got a bunch of hostages, send Savage Dragon in. If you don't send Savage Dragon in, we offer everybody in here. Beep, 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 beep. Yo, Officer Dragon, can you make it here? Yeah, yeah. They got hostages, man. We need you. He come down there, right? He come down there, and you know he's about it. So he's going to sacrifice his life to save the other humans. You know what I'm saying? He's not no prejudice. He hates bigots. And he lets you know that in the beginning of the story when they start being, you know, showing that bigotry to him because he's a freak. He hates that. So he runs into the mall, sacrifices. It's so many villainous circle enemies there. And he's just boom, boom. He's wiping them out. He's trying to. But mind you, in this book, the enemies are very strong. And that's what I like about it. The enemies are strong in here, you know. They do not just go out with just a boom, boom. You know what I'm nah, Man, you ain't sleeping them like that. You really have to put hands on these guys. And they're getting back up. And nine times out of ten, they putting hands right back on you. The villains are really ruthless in here. And it's not just, oh, Superman put on a cape, Superman rescue, one punch, knock them out. Nah, it's not like that. These villains be putting up a fight. They are ruthless. So, um... He goes in there and he's starting to lose. The tables are starting to turn, people. He's getting smashed on by the villainous circle. And all of a sudden, boom, this cyborg comes through one of the mall windows and he has all this Patriot stuff on. Now, he's the cyber Patriot, but nobody knows that at the time. He thinks that he's a bad guy. Cyber Patriot doesn't even know that. Dragon is a good guy. You know what I'm saying? He thinks that they're all bad. He comes in there, guns blazing. 
I'm talking about mowing stuff down. If you went there, you caught some strays. Believe that. He just starts murking, murking people. You know, Savage Dragon, he's not about that. He still, he will beat you to a bloody pulp, mind you. But he don't want to off nobody. So he grabs him. What are you doing? These men deserve a try. He said, no, they off me first. They off me first. He started, he started putting some lead in the uh, Savage Dragon. Finally, the human cops come. They know who he is. They say, hey, man, that's Officer, that's Officer Dragon. What are you doing? I guess hearing that he might have almost hurt one of his fellow heroes, fellow officers, he couldn't take it. Cyber Patriot jumps out the window. He's never to be seen again. Officer Dragon, he's healing up now, right? He's, he, now, this is building all up to a freak force. Now, what the freak force is, you will find out. Savage Dragon has to recruit some more freaks to be on his team because he can't do it by himself. He comes to the realization that he just can't do it by himself, y'all. You know, he's back on his stuff. He heads home. And there's this neighbor girl that's... You know, in the beginning of the story, you can tell that she was kind of liking him or whatever. But he was, you know, he was on his grind. He wasn't paying her no mind. But he comes home. She's crying in the lobby of his apartment and says, yo, can I stay tonight? I got an, apart I got an argument with my with my um, parents or whatever. She's, he says, I don't think that's a good idea. Um, let me talk to them first. She's like, please, please, please. You know, so he brings her in. She stays the night, right? The next morning. He's in the bathroom brushing his teeth. She's running there playing with him, jumping on his back and stuff. Knock, knock, knock at the door. She goes, opens the door. Soon as she opens the door, bop! She brains the spaghetti, y'all. The guy who did it, he turns it on him. Bop! Brains to spaghetti, y'all. Savage Dragon comes out. He sees that. It breaks him, y'all. It breaks him. Not only does he deal with some of his heroes dying, his comrades dying. Now, his neighbor, now, he was just not having no woman in his life or nothing like that. But he only had this woman spend a night one night and she gets off in his apartment. You know what I mean? Double off in a sewer. You know what I mean? Like, what? In a sewer? It's a sewer. Yeah. So... That, that rocks him. He goes down a path of indulgence, drowning his sorrows. And a bottle, the demon in the bottle, y'all. Yes, this uh, this is a superhero story, but it touches so many different things, man. And it does it in a short amount of time. I think this is only 15 issues, y'all. Um, But so he starts to spiral down this path of drinking or whatever. It won't be long, though. He picks himself back up. He picks himself back up. He gets sent on a mission. He goes, like, in the nut. He's at an abandoned, like, apartment or whatever. Or an abandoned back alley or something like that. Abandoned building, it's supposed to be. But they thought that it was the villainous circle hideout inhabiting it. He goes, boom, boom. He kicks the door in. There's two freaks there. One freak named Barbaric, this big, huge guy, and a girl, a little girl named Ricochet. Since he kicked the door in like that, they perceived him as a threat. Boom, they start fighting. Bow, 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 bow. They're boxing, boxing, you know, going back and forth. They, they eventually come to the realization that they're on the same side. And hey, yo, he recruits them. He recruits Barbaric. Okay, he's training them up because they're not ready for mission shit. He's training them up. He goes on another mission, finds another freak inside this abandoned house. She's been chained up her whole life. You know, she looks like a hammerhead shark kind of, but with a whole bunch of spikes on her. Spiky, 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 you know? He saves her. Guess what he does? Join his freak force, you know? He has to get ready because the not only is the villain in the circle at this time, Another faction then spent out of that one. They were called the Annihilators. So you got the Villainous Circle and the Annihilators. 
Now, person, the person who started the Annihilators is named Cyber, Cyber Face. And he got kicked out of the villainous circle, so what did he do? He started his own thing called the Annihilators. Now, as Savage Dragon is building, as Savage Dragon is slowly building his freak force, Frank Darling comes to him to start sending him home missions out of state for some reason. That's when Dark pops up and starts, you know, kind of like crime fighting because Savage Dragon is not there, not there in Chicago and it's getting that bad. But why do you think Chief Frank Darling sent his number one officer out of state? Because Overlord, the villain in the circle, yes, man, he had blackmail on Chief Frank Darling, the guy who brought up Officer Dragon into the force. You know what he had blackmail on? This guy set up the whole thing at the factory where Savage Dragon worked at. Yes, the chief of police set it up because he wanted Savage Dragon to join so bad that it wasn't supposed to blow up the warehouse, but just to show him, yo, it's this bad right now out here. Please join the force. So he set up some crime to happen at that warehouse on the day that, that he was working there so he could see it and then maybe have second thoughts. But... It got out of hand and people lost their life. So, Overlord knows this. He says, hey, if you don't send Savage Dragon out of our way while we're doing our crime, then I'm going to expose you. So that's why Savage Dragon was going on all these out-of-state missions, y'all. So, after Savage Dragon builds his freak force or whatever... They say, yo, we got to take down the Annihilators, which is the spinoff of them. We got to take them down. They go to take them down. They go on a mission. He takes his whole freak force with them. They've been trained up. Yo, 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 we're going we're gonna to go find them, take these guys down. So they go in there. They have a mission. They take them down. One of them is left alive. The main guy, Cyberface. They say Cyberface knows who Overlord looks like behind the mask. So... What does he do? He says, yo, if you testify against Overlord in the villainous circle, you can walk for free. Cool. Tell us where he's at. Now, before they go where he is at, the chief, Frank Darlin, confesses everything to Savage Dragon because Savage Dragon can see it on his face. Like, as the story progresses, he's always asking him what's wrong. The guy's just depressed. The guy's wife leaves him. Um... They break in his house, they, they break his wife's legs, and all this stuff. And then he finally tells them what happened and why he's been going on all these state missions. Because he was getting blackmailed, and this is why he was under blackmail. Savage Dragon takes it okay and says, well, you better skip town because, you know, they're going to kill you. They're going to off you regardless. He says, before I skip town... Let's go after Overlord, me and you. He knew the Free Force wasn't ready for this because on that last mission with the Annihilators, a lot of them got their butt kicked. Um, Dark and Rapture, the two females of the group. Ricochet was one, but she didn't even fight. She was more on behind the scenes type, you know, because she was too young. They wouldn't let her join the fighting force side. But dark they outload her darts because they said that it was excessive force and the rest of them wasn't really up to par but anyways the free force dismantled because the cops were like yo you have to fight in police uniforms they didn't like that so the free force got dismantled free force gets dismantled anyways frank and Savage Dragon go to Overlord's house. Overlord mops the floor with him. Savage Dragon gets kicked out of a 30-foot <laughs> house. Falls on a spike, y'all. Falls on a spike. I mean, left there for dead, right? He gets found by the first two villains he ever put in jail, y'all. They beat him. They beat him down some more. Beat him down some more. He manages to muscle whatever little fight he has left. Knock one of them out. And Rapture happens to find his body. Um, his body, they said that he was missing for two weeks. 
Rapture finds him, and that's where the Ultimate Collection 1 ends, you know? So he muscled the fight that he had in left of him after he fell off the building. He took down the two bad guys that found him, barely had nothing left in him. It took everything he had. He passes out. Rapture finds him. It was two weeks before Rapture finds him, though. Everybody thinks that he passed away, y'all. Everybody thought he passed away. But here's the twist. It shows a plane leaving the city, and guess who's on the plane? The chief, chief Frank Darling. Yeah, I mean, it literally shows him get roasted by Overlord. I don't know how he's on there. So yeah, that's where Ultimate Collection Volume 1 ends, y'all. This was a wild ride. This was a great read. Eric Larson, this collects Savage Dragon miniseries 1 through 5 and 1 through 8. Yo, this was a fire read. I think everybody should read this. Volume 2 just dropped. Once that come in, I will be covering that as well in a spoiler review. Please like the video, comment, subscribe. If you love it, sub it. If you hate it, fake it and sub it anyway. It's your boy Super Duper Sean, man. Super Sean, this is Power Comics, and this is my review of Savage Dragon.